So, Rick, we do see several rooms inside the ship during the episode. The new bridge, the sick bay, and, and um, I think a conference room or some sort of interrogation space anyway. Did you have any input on these sets? And if not, what did you think of them? Does the bridge fit with your vision of the ship? I did a couple of uh, ink sketches of what the, uh, the bridge might look like. Uh, but this was based on what the set designers were drawing hmm. in the first place. How do you get more futuristic in a futuristic show? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, do you do you make everything, you know, super clean and yeah. and bright and unencumbered by you know hatches and uh, uh, cupboards and plugs and and all this? Um, mm. you, you know, how do you make how do you make something look amazingly? Mm further on the timeline. I think Prometheus, the, the interior sets, I, I, I think they look fine. Um, I suspect that for a production uh, vessel, it would look a little bit more business-like, mm -hmm. uh, have, have a bit more bumps and, and pipes and whatnot. Cool. Now, speaking of bridges, <laughs> we can see a bridge module on the second section, or the, the top uh, beta ship as it yeah. were uh is that similar to the battle bridge on the enterprise d like a smaller more rudimentary bridge and then what about the gamma ship does it have a bridge per se or is it more like the tos auxiliary control room hmm. like only the essentials the, the smaller bridge that is hidden when the ships are are combined uh it's uh yeah it, it's very much like the battle bridge it's it's a it's a smaller uh it's a smaller space um the the lower warp hull um, you know, it has a control center of, of sorts, but it's even smaller than just one, know. just one console in a room. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mentioned it was upside down too. How does that yeah. work? Yeah, it's one guy with a joystick, you know. Uh, Riker just piloting it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if these ships are mostly going to be autonomous, uh, mm -hmm. or or maybe getting their directions from the forward hull uh, mm -hmm. during during a fight. I don't know that the that the smaller sections need a crew uh, at all. Maybe everybody's up in the forward hall. Hmm. That makes sense. It'd keep a lot of people out of danger. That's for sure. Yeah. And yeah. it could be operated with a skeleton crew, so possibility. Yeah. Traditionally, engineering halls have been, you know, they've been places where you work, uh, but hmm. in in a you know in a bad situation, everybody goes up to the saucer. But with the Enterprise D. The D had its own escape pods in the engineering section. So, you know, bingo, out, out they go. Prometheus, I think, you know, what we saw really was a work in progress. So conceptually, th there are some very cool things you could do with it. Mm -hmm. But that brings up a new question. With the ship having so many independent systems, does that mean there are, in fact, three engine rooms, three deflector controls, three sets of everything? And, and does that mean that when the ship is combined, Many rooms are not even being used at all. You still have a lot of monitoring of, of systems that have to be done. Uh, uh, when, the, when the two aft halls combine their, their warp cores, hmm. okay, then you just go into a different set of operational protocols. They're, when they're separated, the main computers are going are gonna, to you know, help figure out what resources are needed, hmm. okay, what the power allocation is going to be, all this techie stuff. Uh, you know, and if and if some systems uh, aren't needed, well, okay, they go offline and they're saved for later. Now, would you still like to design a ship that could split into five component components like the original script called for? Uh, do you th or do you think that'd be too complicated a design for Starfleet to con consider developing? Do you think, given enough time, that you could come up with something really stellar? Because I know we'd all like to see it. You know, I think five pieces, you know, five pieces like like the, that swarm of, of hornets. I, I'm not sure that I would like to design, yeah. uh, you know, uh, a, a ship that, that is built to do that. Uh, I think what I would rather play with would be something like uh, uh, a carrier vessel hmm. oh, with yeah. a number of smaller vehicles. Yeah. Okay, I mean, there's a lot of very cool examples of that in science fiction. Like the Gachiman, uh, God Phoenix, it's five different ships, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, a, 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 
a large carrier that has, uh, let's say, a, a, you know, a number of uh, very stealthy at attack fighters. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you know, it, when you get into when you get into military hardware, okay, that starts getting away from the essence of Star Trek. Maybe the bad guys can have big bad pieces of hardware like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, Scimitar would be a good example of something big and bad and. 52 yeah. disruptor banks uh you know even in the the big bad ship in uh uh the second uh jj film the vengeance oh, no, the vengeance the vengeance yeah. okay um that to me is 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 not star trek okay a big honking warship Bottle like that. Uh, prometheus i think is is right at the outer edge of the envelope yeah, uh, you know, in terms of offensive hardware, or is it more defensive? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, were there any subtle things you added to the design we haven't talked about yet to make it feel more advanced? Maybe uh, different shut, uh, different escape pods, some of the phaser strips. Anything you did just to make it feel a bit more advanced? You, you know, Prometheus and and Equinox mm. were a couple of the last. You know, uh, big ships that I that I worked on, and uh, I wanted to start adding little changes to some of the familiar hardware. If you look at both of those ships, I changed the shapes of things like the phaser strips. Why not change things over time? Why not evolve the hardware a little bit at a time? There's uh, something called the hot standby filament, which would be a dull red. You know, just glowing a dull red when it's not being, you know, fired up at full power. Oh, that would be just a subtle change. And you uh, can see those changes in Star Trek Renegades, where the Fellowship ships have that. Great, <laughs> absolutely. The, uh, um, you know, the end of the Enterprise D phasers. Yeah. Okay, they were they were sort of these uh, grayish brown strips that had some nice nice ribbing detail to them, uh, and we use those again and again and again. Okay. Mm. And you know, looking at Voyager, oh, that's a phaser, hmm. okay. Or you know, looking at uh, um, uh, things like the uh, um, the Enterprise E, okay, it's a phaser. Um, with uh, Prometheus and and then Equinox, um, yes, you know those are strips because of their proportions. Okay, and and maybe their colors, but hey, there's a little something else going on in there. So slowly evolved over time. Um, you know, Voyager came to an end, so that was the end of that opportunity to play with the hardware. Now we never got to see this ship uh, truly in its element. Do you think it could take on the flagship, like take on the John Eves designed battleship, the Sovereign class Enterprise E, or do you think it could take on the Enterprise E and a Defiant? Oof. Is this truly the powerhouse of the Federation fleet? Um, no, I don't. Uh, oh, okay. I, 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 I think if you had a squadron of them, okay, you Not know, like a mini squadron when they separate, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's fun to think about. It's fun to think about. Okay, you know, this ship versus that ship. Yep. Uh, who would win in a fight? Okay. Uh, you know, I, I like to think more, more. You know, when I have the time, um, I would try to think in, in more detail about weapons loadouts, uh, fuel capacity, um, okay, you know, maneuverability. Can can Prometheus take out uh, the Enterprise E? Probably not, but, but, you know, maybe some clever battle maneuver, if you could program... A sim, hmm. you know, with the with all the capabilities of the E and all the capabilities of the Prometheus, okay, uh, and you know, you set a couple of players against each other, okay, maybe you could see some interesting, you know, interesting uh, uh, fight going on. But uh, I'll tell you what, let's say it's a tie. A tie. Sure. It could hold its own. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It could limp away without being destroyed. Yeah. With those small little warp cells. Anyway. Last question, Rick. So, what is your <laughs> most favorite and least favorite thing about Prometheus? And if you could change anything, even maybe for a refit, what would you do? I tend to like 
the the basic body plan uh, on on most of the ships that you know that I sketch up. Okay, because you know I know it when I see it. You know, it's like, oh, this is going to be so cool. It's yeah. only a doodle right now, but I can't wait to do the full blueprints. Yeah, cool. Okay, uh, and and you know, I I, I like doodling. Um, I when I see a shape that it's like, oh, oh my god, this this could be just so cool. Okay, um, so the basic body plan, the basic shape of the ship, you know, I I love it. If there was something that I would change on it, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I don't know if there was something that was going to be changed, the producers would have made me do it before we built it, you know. Um, I, I might bulk it out just a, just a hair, you know. Um, I, I think maybe a few of the lines are a little bit too dainty, hmm. if that makes any sense. Too razor edge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I do like it. It's it's a fast looking ship, uh, you know. It looks like it could you know cut through you know an enemy line, yeah. um, or a sovereign yeah. class. Maybe for the maybe for the production model, it goes through some yard changes, hmm. and they end up you know adding some some mass to it, and some more uh, some more armament. Hmm. Makes sense. And yeah. what would you say was your favorite one thing? I know you said the shape, but if you had to pick an actual detail, maybe. <sighs> Actual detail. Yeah. Um, uh, I think those pop-up warp pods. Uh, I, I, you know, it was it was tough trying to think of okay, where are we gonna, how are we gonna give warp capability to this forward hull? I had some extendo pods coming out of the sides. Okay, almost like the Delta Flyer. Oh, that's cool. Okay, all right. Now those might have worked, um, <laughs> but. Um, uh, you would have you would have seen the warp hardware um, in place, okay. And I think what they wanted to do was to keep it a secret hmm. that that forward hull had warp capability. Hmm. It could so have like sliding of, doors or something that slid over them, right? Yeah, but you're again, you know, you're talking episodic yeah. and you're talking more moving yeah. parts and hmm. render time and all the stuff that happens. Once the drawings leave my table, okay, I don't want to make it harder for yeah. these other guys. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, but uh, the, the the little pop-up nacelles, you know, we had those on some linkages where they slid up. Um, and, uh, you know, suddenly, wow, you know, hey, oh, that thing has warp capability too. You know, yeah. neat. Yeah. Uh, so it, it was kind of fun working that out, uh, trying to figure out where those pods were going to pop out of. I think it works. So well done. Yeah. yeah. Well, of course it works. We saw it. And he designed it. Of course it works, Samuel. <laughs> of course it works. Well, thanks for joining us today, Rick. This has been an awesome episode. We learned a lot for sure. Um, we both love this ship, yeah. and it's been awesome to hear your thoughts on the design process, as well as having you theorize with us, because that's what the fans like to see. <laughs> <laughs> we will, of course, be seeing you hey, again you sometime in the future. The you put me on the spot with some of this stuff, you know? That's what we and you do. did great, Rick. You did great. And everyone loves it. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, we will be seeing you in the future for more episodes. So everybody stay tuned for those. And thank you again, Rick. We will see you next time. Yeah, you bet. Take All it right. easy. Well, that was great. This has been an awesome episode so far. We both love this ship, and it's been awesome to hear Rick's thoughts on the design process and having him theorize with us. And, and I've got to say, this ship, as my favorite ship, and I, I said that a couple of times. Yeah. I saw and obviously having the real model, which I never thought I'd be able to, you know, see really, let alone be able to play with, you know, do 1080p renders of it. You know, I really went a bit all out. I think I surprised you with how many pages of new questions that I added to the script because, w again, this is this is a chance to speak to the designer and he put a lot of thought into the ship. So I put a lot of thought into what I want to ask him, and I think it was like three more pages of just questions. So it took a while. Yeah. Hence why this episode is so many parts, but we hope it's really interesting. And again, fan favorite. The information should be out there. I mean, definitely had some good answers, got to say. I was really happy with what I learned. All right, guys, that was great talking to Rick. But yep. now it's time to move on to the discussion part of the show yep. where we talk about what we like and don't like about the show. And Rick just liked it all, so we'll, we'll, we'll have to be more critical. <laughs> Sorry, Rick. Um, but, yeah. I got to first off by, start by saying I simply love the fact that as Trek fans, both Samuel and myself, we can actually write down yep. questions about our favorite franchise and ships. 
and actually just talk straight to the people involved with those. I just love our job here at Drake Yards. <laughs> Some good days. Yeah. Okay, so let's get right into it. Uh, I like this design. It's a nice, sleek look that is definitely a step forward into the future of Starfleet Starship design. I really like the pointier, more aggressive feel that it has. Plus, the way it separates is also very cool. But I think it would look better if it only split into two, personally. Uh, mm. The two engineering sections are very cool ship designs. I like the way they look so aggressive, mm. with the uh, upper one actually being my favorite. If the alpha ship stayed attached to it, I think it would be an amazing looking ship. The bottom one looks very cool, too. So uh, if the main ship, like I said, stayed, stood, stayed attached, it would be much better ship design, in my opinion. I think stretching it to three ships, although originally it was going to be five, which is crazy. Uh, I think three ships is kind of pushing it, especially with them all having warp capabilities personally. Yeah, I certainly agree with you in some aspects there, although I, I do think three is an important number, and I do love the middle one, the beta ship. Uh, it's got a really cool vibe to it, and I think that in itself could be a Federation starship. But yeah, favorite ship. Why is it a favorite ship? Like you say, it's so sleek, it's so elegant. I think it's an evolution, but it's not it's not too far away from the norms. Like every element of Federation design is in here, but yet pushed to that aggressive perfection. Four nacelles, I mean, done for the constellation, uh, constellation, yep. But again, here, that sleek design, and having seen the actual model, they're even a slightly redesigned engine. I love the little details. Um, the front torpedo tubes, the split torpedo tubes, the fact that this little, you know, warp uh, nacelle hidden, it's amazing. Um, I like even the little things. There's not very many escape pods in, in, in the main sections because it's got armor. It's for war. Rick put so much thought in and seeing all the different sketches of all the different parts, again, it really, like, there's always a reason why some of these ships feel fuller because the designers have had time to think about them and this is one of those ships that really gives it. Definitely needed more screen time. Uh, definitely wasn't shown to its full potential anywhere near. And there could have been another follow-up episode, Mission Bottle, uh, Message in Bottle 2, which just showed it actually going to battle. And you've got to ask yourself, like we said earlier, how many ships could this vessel take on by itself? You know, could could the battle of, um, you know, whether the, whether Defiant runs through the blockade, if that was a Prometheus, they probably wouldn't even be damaged at all, just just saunter through. You know, what what could it do? Could it take on five Gros at a time? I don't know. Or um, if they'd had, you know, CG, if they'd had the time, they could have put like sixteen split Prometheus just flying through, because that's, you know, because it splits up. Um, but yeah, amazing design, and I, and I think I love it even more now that Rick's given us some of these answers, because again, favourite ship, but I've always had questions, and so it was amazing to have those answered. So mm -hmm. yeah, love the ship, absolutely love it, but you knew that. <laughs> absolutely I did. And like you said, it was great to actually talk to Rick and theorise mm -hmm. with him. I mean, we got, I think we learned and established a lot of mm -hmm. canon in this episode, just talking to him, so I, I think that's really cool, and that's one of the things I really enjoy here at Trek Yards. Yeah. But... Now it's time to get on to what we don't like. Oh, dear. As I just said, the way it's split into three really doesn't work for me. I think it could have been done now, a little bit neater. Okay, so is it does, it does it work for you but not perfect, or does it just not work for you? Oh, it works for me. It's just not perfect. Okay. I think there's See, that's... subtle refinements that could have been made. Because that's the whole cell for the ship. And as, as we kind of talked to Rick about having the warpness cells pop out of the side of the alpha ship and kind of fold back maybe mm. would have been much nicer than the small little dinky ones he has. But... Yeah, to have Delta Fly style wing mounted ones yeah. even would be would be amazing yeah anyway the small warp nacelles on the main body of the ship like the alpha alpha ship i think are very small and silly looking and they hardly seem feasible even though they are supposed to be warp sustainers oh they're bigger like, than a runabout so it's fine true and they're much like the warp sustainers that you have in a photon or a quantum torpedo that's just a small mm. little device right yeah now, when it comes to the combined ship, one thing that I would like to see is swept back in the cell struts. I really don't like the forward-facing struts. It kind of wrecks the whole aesthetic for me, and it just doesn't seem to fit. Okay. Also, it doesn't. It makes it seem less streamlined to me. Also, the design of the shuttle bay doors seems much too narrow. Uh, I am also not the biggest fan of the ship's interior. The two stations in front of the captain being low set in the floor, almost like a pit, is not something I think. Mm. It's, I think it's a step backwards design-wise for Starfleet. Um, and even Sick Bay is just not a welcoming place, in my opinion. It is a warship. I mean, the Defiance is not exactly true, welcoming, is it? True. But I much prefer the warmer colors of the Galaxy Class Sick Bay. I mean, I want to feel healthy and warm when I'm dying, I guess. I don't know. Plus, the EMH is a dick. Andy Dick. Get it? Ah. <laughs> wow, amazing. That's uh, about all I have for what I don't like, so. 
Yeah, I mean, you're asking me obviously to, to work out what I don't like about my favourite ship, but as with all things, there's always something. Absolutely. Now, this is something we see in some fan versions of it. I know in Armada 3, we see the impulse engines being lit up, but we don't really get a sense of the impulse engines when the ships split. Even though they are in the model, we don't really get a sense of them being active. It would have been nice to see a bit more uh, everything on, even while not separated. Like, if they're using all four nacelles, why wouldn't they use all the impulse engines to give that extra boost? I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, I, I I don't agree with your uh, swept swept in the, uh, struts. I know you didn't. <laughs> because I I kind of think the opposite. I think by pulling them in, the whole thing feels more streamlined because it's so much more compact and as if it's going against the curve, like it's slicing through space. I, it gives it a whole different feel. Like this ship is a very uniquely feeling ship. Sorry, that's a positive. <laughs> Uh, I mean, what... but I think I think it would have been better to have like the rear side like this and the front side of the strut like this. That would have been a cool look, and that would have made it more streamlined to me than instead of having them like this facing forward. I think we need fan know. fan variations for that. I think also, while it's not a ship of war, it would have been good to have a defiant style um, shuttle bay on one of the other sections to leave it not just be a single shuttle bay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, I'd love to know how big that is, how much space, because how much. I think my biggest problem really is that we didn't see this ship enough. It is so much potential in this ship. We only got to see two rooms and a third, but it was a redress of Voyager set. So, I'll say the ones are redresses, but they're much more effort. You know, how much space? And we talked to Rick about this. You know, he he. You know, we postulate that if the ship needs three control work centers, they're not being used for the rest of the, the the missions. You know, how much space is not being used? How much space is being used? How big is the shuttle bay? How big is anything? Like, what is what is this ship really? You know. Um, mm. And and really, like, there's not much I don't like. Like I said, need more after torpedoes. Probably need is another phaser array there somewhere. But yeah, I mean, these are sort of minor things. It's more just about fleshing it out. Um, but really, it's just after torpedoes. And yeah, and I'd, I do agree with you with the bridge, though. The bridge is a bit of an odd one. I think it's meant to be super minimalistic, bar budget constraints. And so they're going for a different vibe, I guess. But there's a lot of empty space. And if, if, if you need that much empty space, shrink the bridge then. I mean, it... But I think when they have the full version, they'd replace the uh, the bridge module. Like like Rick said, the ship's not even finished. There's not even going to be rooms that are finished. So I'm assuming you can probably take that out. Um, but yeah, great ship. Love it. And mm -hmm. not much I don't like. So well done, Rick. Absolutely love it. And thank yeah. you for making my favorite ship, like I said in the episode, which is now by me earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. That wraps it up for yet another Trek Yards episode. A look at a true fan favorite and much requested ship. And... Samuel's favorite, so I don't have to have him tugging on my sleeve all the time. Let's do the Prometheus. Let's hey, do... hey, I've been very good. I've been saving oh, it. I'm just kidding. I'm yeah. just teasing here. Yeah. We still haven't done my favorite ship, but that's for the 50th. No, we did. Yeah, we did the Dreadnought. Did that, no, no, no. Did that Connie, by episode 10? Oh, Connie. come on. You say and episode... The, the Dreadnought episode, in all fairness, needs a revision because there's a lot missing <laughs> a lot of mission, missing uh, information in that episode. It was like so. episode 10. So, so. I know. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed the show, and we certainly hope that you learned a thing or two. Talking to Rick about her was, as usual, awesome. <laughs> uh, if you want to help us create future content, please head on over to the Patreon by clicking the link in the video description and support us there, or by clicking the donate button over on trekyards.com. And these do make a big difference, guys. Even if it's $5 Absolutely. a month, I mean, it makes a huge difference. And speaking of clicking things, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. And share. For us as well. You can. And share, yes. Uh, that helps us out and gets you all the notifications you need to know about all the new content that we release, which is a lot. <laughs> As usual, we will see you all next time. Until then, please check out some past Trek Yards episodes. This is Captain Foley. And Commander Coggins. Signing off until then. Engage multi-vector assault mode because it's time to split up this episode. Go! <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>